All right, so what you see here is a sort of a needle levitated rotor. Um, you can't see it because all the lights are off. So I'm going to take a flashlight, put my finger over it like this, see if I can show just enough where you can see that this rotor is uh, levitating, and, or excuse me, uh, rotating. And you can see it is spinning. I'm trying to keep the light out of the solar cell, which is right there. But this jewel thief uh, is very efficient. And right now, it is uh, it's running over a volt, but it's only drawing about 100 microamps. And that LED is not very bright at all. But it's enough to uh, spin that rotor off that tiny little kick that that solar toy is getting and I thought that was pretty cool um, that it would run off that obviously doesn't go very fast but I also don't have the magnets sitting very close or as close as they could be to that coil I haven't really played with the adjustment of this rotor uh, quite yet but I just wanted to show what it looks like uh, when it's going so there you go I mean I I guess you'll have to take my word for it that it runs off of that uh, little jewel thief light that little tiny LED right there it'll run off that um, but that's it's basically the demonstration of the low power that that takes and how frictionless that rotor is all right, now this one is uh, very similar to that one. Um, it's got the same, pretty much the same bearing setup. And um, the, basically the difference between this and using the needle uh, to attract to the magnet, um, I found is that it's easier using two cylinder style magnets like this um, one on the rotor one on the stator you could say or on the support um, because that way not only can you balance it basically on a screw tip or whatever um, but you can adjust it like I, if you right underneath this straw here is obviously another magnet that straw is there to provide space between the two magnets because it wants to jump up and stick to the other magnet obviously and that keeps it from latching on all the way I can just pop it back down real easily but I have this screw here uh, through this chopstick action that I got down with with very fine threads on it a lot of very fine threads that way I can adjust uh, the height of the top magnet according to the bottom magnet with extreme precision which is very necessary because um, it's quite easy to fix a support magnet like that where it will suspend or hold up a rotor magnet just fine and it'll spin very freely and all that um, but unless you actually adjust it to its extreme to the very you have to bring it to the threshold of where it no longer wants to rest on the surface and just the slightest disturbance will cause it to lift up and attract to the magnet and stick. At that point, you have a, a bearing type deal that, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. I've <clears throat> this is probably the um, most frictionless rotor I've definitely ever made. Um, so I just wanted to show this. I know um, Magnet Man, I believe, was the one who um, first started using these type deals which is a great idea where it sits on a point and it's suspended upward by another magnet and um, I believe he was mainly using needles long needles where the needle tip would just sort of hold in place and I remember that video and I tried it and um, I came to the conclusion that in order to get it as stable as I needed it uh, to be able to work on this guy right here I, I felt like it just wasn't able to um, 
I felt like it, the, the friction that I was getting from there was about equal to if I simply hung it and suspended it from another screw like I used to have it. Uh, but now that seems to work out much better. Um, and at the end of the day, you have a rotor like this that I'm not sure how long it will take to spin down, but as so long as you balance it properly, uh, it should take an extremely long amount of time to spin down. I'm, I'm, I've seen this thing move on its own um, for reasons I was unable to determine. Um, for so long, it was ridiculous. Um, maybe probably a passing breeze or, you know, I don't know. But at any rate, I realized these, these cylinder magnets, for whatever reason, you can get a good balance between the two because there's a point between the two where, whoo, almost screwed that up, where they sort of want to form a coherence where it'll sort of magnetically lock the rotor in a certain way. So just me spinning this right here is kind of getting that going. Um, but you see it, it's fairly stable, okay? But it's stable in a way where it is practically hovering on the surface of this metal here. Um, that's how it has to be. I mean, it's it's just this the slightest movement. Got a lot of band aids on right now. The slightest movement makes it want to jump up, and if you have it anywhere outside that region it wants to be, it will tend to jump up and stick. Now, I'll tell you what, I feel like this can be adjusted even more, where I can move it down, let's say, slightly more, and if I can still get it to stay, which, oh, Sounds a little bit too much. Now, just for example, let me bring it way up. Bring it way, way up. It'll obviously still work. It'll still work great. And this is what I imagine uh, to be similar to how the needle ones work that uh, Magnet Man and others were using. Now, I'm not going to say that's bad at all. It's not. However, it can get extremely better because it, it this is this is at the point where it's still resting on much of its own weight the the, the amount of friction there is astronomical in comparison to every little turn i take on this screw is effectively making that rotor lighter so when i get to the point where i can set it's like look how I'm surprised it was. A, I'm surprised it was able to go down so far. This is a good example. If I was to try to replace that rotor with my hand right now, I don't think I would be able to. But the fact that it's sort of kind of got this co coherence, the lock going on, it's sitting in the perfect aligned position right now. It really wants to shoot up. It really wants to shoot up and stick, and that and it just did. But I'm going to say right there is a very good position. Right there is a point where it's practically weightless. So I believe something like this would be very similar to simply magnetically levitating it all together without having to do it. So I thought this was really cool. I know I can drive this from uh, practically nothing. And that will be the plan. But I thought that was a really cool way to do it. This coil is not doing anything, by the way. It will eventually. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that. I thought it was a really good twist on the needle um, rotor setup. And I, I found it to be just really cool to play with. Spin that up. I'll use a straw right here. Try not to blow too hard. 
but just pin that up with a straw like that, like lit or uh, laser saber, and others have done. I mean, it, it's gonna go for so long; it's ridiculous. It's not even funny. Just, just that arrangement, for whatever reason, has proven to be really good. Really good. But that's all there is to it. You see, putting that little blocker there is pretty much key to avoid frustration. Also, in my opinion, because it is so easy to remove once it tries to latch on. Um, but once you get it, you will not be disappointed. So yeah, uh, anyway, these cylinder magnets, I'm not sure if you can buy them. You probably can. I got them from an old job, though. Um, you find these inside fixtures that go, that you basically drill in the top of doors, and those fixtures trigger reed switches for professional alarm systems. So I had a bunch of these that I pulled out of those, and turned out that they worked pretty good. So yeah, I would definitely recommend giving that a shot.